Hello ESL endorsement students. My name is Kent Carrico, librarian for Benedictine Library, and I'd like to welcome you to the ESL endorsement program and especially the Library of Benedictine University. Throughout your uh, next few months and through this program, you may be called upon by your instructors to go outside of the course material and to locate research on a particular area of ESL. Um, where to find this information, how to find this information, is what this little orientation is about. And also to show you services and the things that we can do for you uh, throughout your whole program that might encourage you to use the library. I will begin by showing you the overview of the library website, the different little places to go, and we'll talk about your library ID number, for example, the 14-digit number that you will need to use to get through security in order to get into the databases. I will show you the tabs the database is set up with or the website is set up with, and I will show you the different features that we have, the contact numbers, and all kinds of things to kind of encourage you. I've also given handouts, so each one of you have those handouts. That will um, reiterate many of the things I will show you and in more detail than what I can do in a short uh, orientation tutorial. So stay tuned. We're going to have a great time, I think, and it should be more than a few minutes. And uh, I would like to welcome you personally uh, to the program, and, and please feel free to call me and contact me or email me at any time. I'll give you all my contact information uh, during the, um, the tutorial itself. So congratulations, and good luck in your program, and I think it's a wonderful thing you're doing. Be right back with you with the tutorial. Welcome back. Now, how do you get to the library website is pretty easy. You know how to get to the university website. Look on the left-hand side on the column and click on library. That's pretty easy. So the address is ben.edu front slash library. And once you have the library locked in at home or wherever you do your studying, just a bookmark it. Now let's lay down to where it says library and get rid of the future students area because those tabs are not active to the library. They're, those are website act, uh, active to the university website. So here we are. <clears throat> on the left hand side notice library home. If you click on that and whenever you see that you will get back to this page, the default home page. About the library, you need to know something about the library often just to get going. So let's say you have a problem where you're attempting to uh, get access into a database and you're having an issue with that. Uh, the way that you would solve that problem is by going to where it says hours of operation. The first thing you want to ask is when are you open or are you open on the time that I'm asking for the help. So if you look at the Lyle library hours, that's our, uh, our main university library, Notice that it gives you Monday through Sunday hours, but Sunday is closed through August 21st, and the reason we're closed on Sundays is because we operate as a university on two completely different types of schedules. One is a traditional semester, which doesn't begin till after August 21st, and when we are on campus active for the traditional semester, we are open Sundays from 12 p.m. to uh, 11 p.m. every Sunday. Thor during the summer we are closed so you would have no one to respond to your question if you wrote us or if you tried to call us on Sunday. Uh, on notice Saturday we close at 5 p.m. All of these things you can determine just li by looking at library hours. Coming up uh, very shortly here we're going to have Labor Day and notice that Saturday September 3rd through Monday September 5th we are closed. You need to know that because often adults are studying whenever they can and sometimes that means on holidays and those are the times where you might have a problem trying to get help. So how can you get help when the library is closed? That's a good question. Let's click on staff directory. This is a listing of about 12 to 15 of my favorite people here. These are the professional librarians and the man, many of the paraprofessionals and staff that work uh, for the benefit of its patrons, and that is you. Uh, my name, Kent Carrico, is very much on the top because of alphabetic reasons, of course. Uh, and there's my office number, 6055, but when I'm not in the office, you 
can still get a hold of me. If you notice the handouts that I gave you, I've given you a business card. That's a lovely business card too, by the way. It's taken me years to get one that nice. Please take that and put that on your refrigerator door. Um, and for those of you who would like the number, this is it. 630-487-1788. Eight. That Blackberry that the university so lovely gave me uh, will allow you to call me if I don't, I'm not able to take your phone call, leave a message, I'll be able to pick it up. You can also text me. So as I'm driving down the 290 and I hear the little bleep sound, I'll know whether a student is trying to get a hold of me. Of course, I, I wouldn't read it or text you while I was driving. <laughs> of course I wouldn't do that. Uh, but I will know that you're trying to reach me. And for those of you who want to send an email, my BlackBerry even allows me to know that you're sending me email. And I can actually read my email on my BlackBerry. Isn't technology wonderful, folks? Here is my email address. K C A R R I C O at Ben dot E D U. Okay. Chat, you can only get send so much information that way. Phone calls, of course, you can leave hours of, of, of angst and, and questions on, a, on the uh, answering machine or tell me personally. Uh, the email, if you have a very specific question, uh, let's say you send it to me at 9.30 or 10 o'clock on a Saturday night. Um, I usually check my email before I go to bed at night. I'm a lovely man. And in the morning when I get up, I check email. And if you have asked me a question, I will try to respond to you the very first thing in the morning. Um, and I go through a sequence like this seven days a week. I'm, I'm a very difficult person to live with, but I do take care of my students. So please realize that I'm available albeit I may be sleeping or at Whole Foods when I answer your phone calls, so don't be surprised if uh, you know, you're know you not quite sure what my state of mind is. But give me uh, a, a message. Let me know you're having an issue. Call me directly. We can communicate a great deal of information. Two other names here, my friends Amy Widener, incredible technology, digital resources librarian. She's the kind of person you would call if you're having a technical problem with the library. If you have a technical problem with Blackboard, she can sometimes answer it, but that's not her job. That's IT Help Desk. So Amy is anything to do with the library from a technical point of view. My good friend and colleague in arms, Ariel Neff, is incredibly talented research and instruction librarian, but she is also very savvy with technology. So if you have any kind of issues, you can contact those folks. But anybody else on this page will be delighted to either answer your question or direct you to a source of information to solve your problem. Here is the chat, the lovely green and pink chat with a librarian. All you have to do is click on this. If you are in the middle of trying to, let's say, do a research, uh, for an article and you need to ask a question of somebody and all you need is oh my gosh I forgot my library ID number how do I do that you can click chat your message and because we have the green bar of availability there will be somebody there that will pick up and respond to your question okay now they may be with somebody else so it may not be instantaneous but be patient they will respond they know it's there as long as it's available somebody is there okay Another thing to consider is circulation and reference. Both have phone numbers. One way to get a lot of information disseminated in a quick amount of time is by going to and speaking with a real, live, lovely human being. So referenced people like myself uh, that respond to uh, questions of how do I do this or where can I find this or can you help me. Um, 829-6057. The circulation would be the place you would go, let's say it's early in the morning and they're the first people on call, uh, would be reference. They will make sure that the right people get your phone numbers, okay? So that's your service stuff and you want to remember that. So click on Library Home and go back. You will probably undoubtedly have an assignment someday where you are supposed to augment the, re the readings uh, in your class uh, texts or in your handouts or whatever. And your uh, professor may ask you to go find an ESL um, uh, article, something you're interested in, some research in a periodical or in a journal. So how do you do that? When you're at the article page where it says red, this is where you as an off-campus student or any of us would go to find databases. You can find them under popular databases, 
That's about 10 of our most popular databases. You can find them through the A to Z list, which is all of the databases we have. And these are all direct links to those databases. So all you have to do is just click on that link. Or you can go through the subject list if you want a, um, a kind of a grouping of uh, educational types of databases. You can go to education, open it up, take a look. Here are different databases. Not all of them are journal databases. There are book catalogs like eBrary. That's all digital books. Or Chronicle of Higher Ed, which is a, a, a higher ed publication, a weekly publication or daily publication during the week. OK, you can go there and get to those databases. It doesn't matter. You have to go through the system. And when you're off campus, the very first thing you have to do is that you have to go through security. So when you click on a database, for example, like Academic Search Premier, very first thing that will happen, and there's my colleague Ariel that's asking for me. I'll just close her off for a second. Is I will click on the easy proxy, and there is what you have to go through. This is the security that you have to go through here. So I would have to put in my last name, just like it would be on my ID card or as I registered, and my 14-digit library ID number. There it is in memory. Now, you may say, what is my 14-digit library ID number? I know about my B number. Well, let me show you. If you go down here to FAQs, and here it says Read More, if I click on Read More, it will direct me to the BU Basics uh, Library Guides page. And the very first thing it shows us is what my library no ID number would be, how to locate it. Now, remember, if you ha you should have an ID card within a week if you don't already have it, a Ben ID card. You turn it over to the back. There's a barcode, and below that is your 14-digit library ID number. And if you look at your handout, once again, the very first thing I put on there is how to find your, how to know what your ID number is, your library ID and what the proxy or the security looks like that you go through. So ID numbers always begin with the library prefix 2281100 and include your seven digit student B number without the B. In other words, you have, uh, as an example on your handout, if, if the library ID uh, prefix is 2281100 and let's say your student B number was B1234567, your library ID number would be 2281100123456 and your last name. And that would get you um, to, through the database, through that proxy we looked at and into the actual database itself. So play with these tools. Use these tools. This is absolutely essential that you do this. So those are for articles. You click on books and reserves. Now that tab is read and you can search our collection for example uh, for anything in ESL. So if I put in ESL as a keyword I pull up results and notice that the results with the big red E are electronic books. The rest of these without readies are in physical format somewhere in our library. You can ask for those. But if you want an e-book collection, you see the e, you can click on the title of the book. The record opens up and right here by online access. Notice there's an active URL. You can click on it. It will take you directly to the full digital e-book. So within this, on the right hand side, you have table of contents, you have your samples, uh, your chapters, and this is a fully readable in the browser ebook. It is incredible that we have these available for you. Um, it's taken us a couple of years to get this to the level it is now, but we have over 70,000 digital books fully capable for you to use and read from wherever you are. Um, look at journals. If you click on the journals tab, it takes you to a place where if you have a citation, you have the author, you have a title, you have the name of the journal, you have the year and the page number, and you're wondering where do I find this? How can I find this article somewhere? Right here is where you would type in the title of the journal and then it will find the database where that journal resides and you can link directly to that database. Library guides, this is where an A to Z list of some of the better library guides are exist. Now this are all helpful tutorials, guides, uh, how-to uh, content produced by the librarians at Benedictine. So for example, you use APA citation uh, in education, maybe you need a refresher on it, click on the APA 6th edition, and here's a library guide that will 
give you the kinds of information and the places to go for uh, informing yourself on the APA style. Now I have a lot of this also in your handouts. So keep your handouts and look at them, you know, read them over lunch when there's nothing better to do. And you will find that there's a lot of information, a lot of answers I've provided in those handouts as well. But LibGuides is a wonderful place to go uh, for all kinds of information on how do I use this, how do I search, what kind of database should I use. Videos, we have a totally streaming video collection as well. So take a look at that, you'll find that very useful and very helpful. Okay, this is a quick and uh, guide to the library website. You have all of our contact information. You have my contact numbers. Good luck with your ESL program and I will speak with any of you at length about any of this at any time during your, during your entire program. So take care and good luck to you.